Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsessions will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dork down for a while. Hey, it's Jackie Cation. Welcome to the Dork Forest. You know the websites, JackieCation.com, DorkForest.com, TheDorkForest.com, FamilyPetAncestry.com, because uh, it made me laugh. It just takes you to JackieCation.com. Let's do the credits. Mike Rickberg composed and sang that song you just heard, sang it with his wife, Sarah Cohen. He will sing his words to the Mexican hat dance at the end of the show. Vilmos fixes my website, JackieCation.com, and Patrick Brady's going to fix this audio. And it's November and December of 2016, and I ask that you do not donate to the Dork Forest in November and December. Instead, find a local food bank. Google the words food bank, the name of your town, and something will come up. Throw that money that you might have thrown at the Dork Forest at the food bank. And if you've donated to me this uh, this November so far, uh, I'm going to throw it at the Los Angeles food bank. So thank you so much for that. Other than that, if you want to still support the show, there's plenty of ways to do it. Of course, you can get merch. There's plenty of t-shirts, Dork Forest t-shirts, Spooky Reading Girl t-shirt is a stand-up t-shirt of mine. You can get CDs. I have all my CDs and, and a hard copy of my DVD on my website. You can get those over at JackieCation.com on the merch page, the store page. And all of the CDs and stuff are available on Amazon and iTunes, and you can just stream them, of course, for free on all your streamable things. And I get a little bit of a kickback from that. So there's, you can do it any way you want. Uh, there's, um, the other thing you can do, which uh, as we go into the holidays would be great is when you order from Amazon, there's a little Amazon logo on the front page and there's on the support the page page of the website, uh, there is an Amazon banner. And all it does is it takes you to Amazon if you order from Amazon, and most of us do. Uh, the Dork Forest gets a little bit of kickback. doesn't cost you extra. Uh, it's just if you use that portal at JackieCation.com, the Dork Forest gets a bit of a kickback. So those are ways to support the show. Uh, another way to support the show is to be good to each other out there. And, uh, you know, we're all dorks, you guys. So I need all of the rangers out there to stand up for people who maybe can't. So get out there and get in the way of uh get, get get in the way of some shitty behavior. Just stand up for other people out there, okay? This is the United States and it's getting real weird. But the Dork Forest will remain the Dork Forest. So what the hell? Let's get into it. It's a dork expedition because I forgot to record one on the road too much. Here I'll scratch you my voices. Longest intro ever. Talk to you later. Uh, enjoy the show. Hey, it's Jackie Cation. Welcome to the Dork Forest. It's sort of a dork expedition mm -hmm. because I am in your house instead We're, of my house in yeah. Van Nuys. You're out and about and I'm just in for the night. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny uh, Chalikian, correct? Yes. There we go. Nailed it's it. uh, of Armenian descent, one yes. would imagine. And where are you? Where Now, you're a comic. I know mm -hmm. that. And uh, true. you uh, are part of the duo that runs with Aaron Judge, who is yes. uh, a friend of the show. I happen to be observing this dark forest. <laughs> Which is usually a rule I do not approve of, because I want there to be another mic so that you can observe with your mouth. Jenny knows when to point the mic at me. Okay. That's, that's part of co-hosting for as long as we have. Oh, fair enough. You guys have shared a mic before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a very, it's a very sherry kind of show. <laughs> Yeah, because you guys do the Rip Bodice show down. Best show in town, yes. Best show in town. In Culver City. In Culver City. In the last week, I have purchased no less than 12 romance novels oh and God. read five of them. The, the Rip Bodice, the show we do the show at, or the, the store we do the show at, is amazing. Right. I, and they're always adding new things, so I hardly right. endorse it's, it. Uh, right. The, the, the nonfiction book that I'm reading uh, that I got there called Dangerous Books for Girls <sighs> is... Uh, <laughs> I, it's been hard. It's been a hard road, kind of finishing it. It's better. It's good. It's uh -huh. really good. It's kind of fascinating, but it's also sort of written. It's written about romance novels and sort of the history of romance novels, but yeah. it's written sort of like I would write it mm -hmm. with sort of. Well, here's some research. Here's some opinions. I went to Wikipedia. So a and podcast as a book. Podca it was yes. a podcast as a book. Okay. 
and <laughs> not 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 slamming it at all. Just, no, because I'm enjoying it. Yeah, but it's and it, and then I tried to read some of her her fiction, the woman who wrote it, uh-huh. and it's um, not entirely for me. It's a, mm-hmm. a there's a very you know you got to pick your porn. Your porn is very specific. Yeah. and I have a book on my shelf right now that's kind of the same. It's called Badass. Yeah, um, he has a site on online, but it's just badasses throughout history it's men and women yep um and it's it's true stuff but obviously it's called badass right so like throughout the thing you're just like this this doesn't seem super academic (laughs) (laughs) but it's true i think right right it's all based on truth yes i love the description of uh podcast as book Mm -hmm. because it's they're facts it's out there. It's a, it's, it's and definitely a genre that you, just doesn't you can have a name. self publish is yes. what I guess we're learning. And, Cause much <laughs> yes. like you can self broadcast. Yeah. Uh, Jenny Chalikian, uh, so you're doing me a favor cause I have been on the road so much. I haven't been able to get Dork Forest going on in yeah. Van Nuys for a couple of weeks here. <laughs> so I asked Aaron Judge if, if, impromptu and she was like, Oh my God, get Jenny on. Have her talk about Xena the Warrior Princess. Mm-hmm. It has never been addressed. I can. What? Here on the Dork Forest, 500 episodes, no Xena the Warrior Princess. Oh, I'm so glad that I get to rectify this. I can't believe it took you until this year to get Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I, well, there, Ooh. it's true. It is true. There, it was Barbara, right? It was Barbara Holm, I think, right? <gasps> and I love her. I just met her a couple months ago and she's a treasure. She's a, yeah, she's a national treasure. She is. She's a, she's a, a delight from the Bay Area, Barbara Holm. And, uh, Portland. She's in Portland. Portland. God dang it. I said that when she did the show too. I kept <laughs> insisting she was from San Francisco until finally she was like, who are you thinking? <laughs> and I'm like, I have no idea. She looks, just her aesthetic, she looks like she was on Buffy. Like, she looks <laughs> like a character from Buffy. And I say that with love. Barbara's listening to this and R.I.P. Barbara, because she just died. Hearing somebody say that on that the, she seemed the podcast. exactly like she her soul live just in like that. escaped and she's like, get back here. Wait, it's, uh, I gotta go to Sunnyvale. Mm-hmm. Um, or Sunnydale. Sunnydale? It would be Sunnydale. Yeah. Sunnyvale's a real I haven't real done a talent. rewatch. I haven't done a rewatch in a while. Oh, yeah. It's, so Xena, I tried to rewatch it because it was, I did a show for, where you had to dress up like a character. Well, and you have a Xena up. outfit is what is only, my understanding it's is. the only outfit I have. Yes. And so I dressed as Xena. Oh, I love Andy this. made I love me this. Uh, the circlet thing. Chakram. Yes. Chakram, who I always want to call a chakra, mm-hmm. but isn't. It's a chakram. <laughs> and he painted it to make it look like a chakram. It oh. was, I got a, I got, essentially it was a frisbee without a middle. You know those frisbees? I do. And uh, and then he said, and then at the end of it, you could throw it out into the... And I said, well, then you'll have to make me another one if I ever wear the outfit. I'm not going to strip off the outfit and give that away. What, what are you, nuts? <laughs> and so I That think, would be a big finish to any show. That would be show. a very big finish <laughs> between me and my audience. Yes. <laughs> you guys, these are out. Let's just have them all the way out. <laughs> so, but yeah, so I have that costume... Um, because I think of myself as very dangerous and very sexy, yes. but no one more so than Lucy Lawless as oh. Xena. She still has that, like, uh, the, the Xena nature that she, she just carries it with her. I she think. really does. Now she, the actress She's special. is from New Zealand, correct? Yes. All right. She's a Kiwi. And I think they filmed, they filmed Xena there. It makes sense. I think they've filmed. It's I got introduced to it through Hercules. Is that how you got there? Or? Yes. Okay. Um, and I, have a weird relationship with both shows because uh how old were you you must have been a baby i was in like maybe grade school like yeah, second f- fifth grade yeah because i was still at home we weren't allowed to watch tv oh well, i definitely I'm still at home I, hopefully you yeah. were 10 well she did leave home at 14 oh did you? i did i did boarding school for high school oh fair enough um but you mean zena, anybody zena nice? stayed with me in <laughs> fanfic form uh, in boarding school. Mm. Uh, but I wasn't allowed to watch TV when I was at home. As a so, tiny child? Yeah, because I just never did homework. So I was always grounded, just always. <laughs> and so the way I watched it was I would just leave the TV on, okay. uh, hide under the, the thing. I would put subtitles on. Yep. And if my parents walked in, I was hidden enough that they didn't see me. And they're like, ah, some person... Who, there's only four people in our house. 
like someone left the TV on again to this exact channel. And uh, so, yeah, I like watched both shows in like secret. In it secret. was very, yeah. All right. So Kevin Sorbo. Loved Kevin, him. Is that his name? That, that's it's his, a, that's his real Tom life Servo. name. Yes. Tom Servo is from Mystery Science Theater 3000. <laughs> yes. And then Kevin Sorbo is a human. Tom Servo is Baron Vaughn now, isn't it? I would not be surprised. I, I understand think that's the, the Baron new Vaughn. casting. Oh, he that's is, yeah. awesome. And um, so, which is so weird, because why would they recast something that is a, a robot that you could have kept the old voice? But, you know, you got to update stuff. And I love Baron Vaughn, so I'm glad he's working. Uh, of course, Joel Hodgson and all those people. It'd be nice if they were kept working, but they probably sure I they feel are. like they'll show up. Mm. Right? I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But okay, so you watched it when you were in grade school. Yeah. And have you watched it since? Uh, yeah, I have uh, all the DVDs. You still. have all the DVDs? Yeah. All right. Okay. So all the DVDs. Uh, uh, they're on Netflix, too. Zena yeah. Is. Wa- I do watch it more often on Netflix. Because it's easier. Yeah. Because you can just tune in, even yeah. though on a DVD you can fast forward mm-hmm. and you can frame by frame, mm-hmm. which is also kind of fun. Yeah. And uh, and you got director's commentaries, which I'm, which I've... I've listened to the director's commentaries for any available episode. You have. If they shot a director's commentary, you I've have watched listened that. to them. Yes. Okay. So, it goes deep, Jackie. It, it goes does go. Deep. This is perfect. Okay. <laughs> so, how many seasons? Do you know how many seasons there are? Six. Six. Okay. God. And I, I feel like now I'm nervous because I'm like, I'm in deep. And it's like, how many seasons? Oh, oh no, no. And the thing is, very it's enthusiasm. Basic question. It's fine. I'll just get emails from people who, who then go down a rabbit hole yeah. and go, well, what she meant to say. And you're like, yes, yes, she did. We have a mutual friend, uh, Kenda, who literally has a Xena shrine in her house. She has a Xena cardboard cutout. She has oh. all of the, the figurines arranged. That's got to slow down shoplifting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, those figurines of cops are yes. in, the, in the stores. Um, so what, so, but talk to me. Okay. So what's your favorite? What's your favorite? So you started, like, do you watch, when you rewatch, do you watch from the beginning or do you go, you know what? Season three, that's where it really. Season two and three, I think. I watched the, the most. Yeah. Yeah. And so. We get some backstory, I know, in season one mm-hmm. about how, you know, she didn't save her family. Like, she goes back to her family, and they're like, you're dead to us. And and then she goes back out into the world, right? She became, uh, like, basically a warlord in order to protect her village. Right. Uh, because it was sacked by some other warlord. Mm-hmm. And her mom was like, her mom didn't like the violent turn that she took. Yes. And I'm just like, it's doing it for you. But they explored <laughs> that, too. Right, they explore that yeah. and they explain it, and that's good. And then Gabrielle just is like she's passing through town, and Gabrielle is like, "I want to be your like squire." I oh, do they made it right? a crucial time when Zena's like, "Oh, I'm the worst. I'm the." She has a she has a come to Zeus moment where she's just like, "Right on." I have been a terrible person because mm-hmm. she does like a choose your own adventure of how you can be <laughs> the worst person and just chooses all of them. Okay. She becomes like a war, like, like when her mom kicks her out, like she, what she saves her own village, right? Yeah, but then she just goes, and off. then she goes she, rogue. She goes full tilt bad, right? She's like, okay, well now that it turns out I'm good at this, yeah, I'm just gonna go rape and pillage my own way, mm-hmm. and then get my own army. And she's very good at it, and yes. she's super good at it. She is the best at it. And so she say. spends a couple of years doing that, building a rep, mm-hmm. and then we meet her. Yeah. When she's had this come to She's Zeus like moment. literally burying all of her uh weapons and then these other people are coming to sack Gabrielle's village ah. and she saves them. And Gabrielle's like, Yeah, my village is a tiny, terrible place. Full <laughs> I gotta of get small out of this mines. town. I gotta get out of this town. Man. And I gotta go. <laughs> Would uh yeah, I vaguely remember that. Mm-hmm. So then she just sort of follows her on foot, right? Mm-hmm. For the first, basically the first season, Zena's like, "Go away, <laughs> go away." <laughs> I did, you go. Uh, yeah. So it's very like episodic, but yeah, they soon become very. Are they? Is it twice. Monster of the Week? Uh, I think the first season. The first very season, pretty much, much, so. much so. Very. It's much like, so. and here's this bad guy, and here's this Which other bad guy. People say bad things about that, but what's wrong with the monster of the week? No, I'm like, pro I, monster of the week. I'm very. Everyone's very into these like full season arcs, but a people aren't very good at doing them. Right. And B 
Who cares? But yeah, I don't need to, <laughs> especially when I'm just getting to know a character. I want Monster of the Week because I'm yeah. like, how do you deal with it when it's this monster? Yeah. How do you deal with it when it's this other kind of monster? Exactly. I'm, well, I'm in the first season of Supergirl. <gasps> oh, I just watched that. The first I'm season? I'm super into it. It's super great. Yes. That's because it's amazing. Are you watching if it? If you want to talk about Supergirl, I will also talk okay, about well, Supergirl. Let's, let's do some more Xena and then there we'll talk Supergirl. There are parallels, Supergirl. believe me. Are there? Yes. How are there par- I'm on episode 11 of the first season, so there's another 10 episodes I mean, of the first season. I mean, I just, I'm very drawn to bossy women. Who oh, to powerful. Know what they're about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Except for that, the, the, and the casting on Supergirl. All right, let's just full tilt switch over to Supergirl. <laughs> yep. Unless you want to run this train more Xena. I will do, uh, everything and anything. Okay, well, let's weave the two together. Yes. In some w- weird way. Yes. Calista, Calista Flockhart. Is my new hero. Is a gift that to, has been given back to us. Uh, Where has she been? I don't know, but I'm psyched she's back. Cl- she, yeah. Yeah. She plays essentially like Meryl Streep in Devil Wears Prada, mm-hmm. but for TV. Mm-hmm. So she's a smaller character, but she's also super powerful and says amazing things. She's tenacious. She's vicious, but she's on the side of like. Of right. Yeah. She's, her heart's in the right place for being mm-hmm. such a raging asshole. Mm-hmm. And she has to be a raging asshole because. Yeah. Did you, like one of the last, ep- I don't know. I've talked about this on other podcasts. So, uh, Rangers know. But the, uh, <laughs> the thing is, is <laughs> the, but Supergirl, I love that act, that actress, because she makes those two characters be very different. I started watching Supergirl because I was tired of all these shows that are like, let's show the darkest, worst side of humanity. Yes. And that is truly all that there is. And I'm like, no. And cause, and I saw Supergirl and I was like, this is a golden retriever of a human being. Yes. Yes. It who is. is just like. <laughs> That's who what just we want. wants to fight and protect the ones she loves. Yes. And, and she's a good egg and she believes in people. Yeah. And it's right? not easy. No. It that's isn't. my, that's my thing that I don't like about Superman is because I was always very put off that they're like, he, he just didn't seem to have any flaws or any. Like, and they had to invent, like, kryptonite. And it's right. like, oh, oops, if you walk into a room with kryptonite, it's... Right, uh, then you're toast. Yeah, I just... Uh, there's plenty of people out there who will be like, um, actually, and I actually will talk to you, but, but like... <laughs> but uh, yes, Supergirl Jenny, seemed like a little different in that it, it seemed like, I don't know, she was more entrenched in... Well, I think it helps that she came to the came to the earth when she was 13. Yeah. It's different than when you came as a baby yeah. and you grew up as a baby on earth. Mm-hmm. She knew Krypton and then she also knew yeah. earth. So she ha- there's more depth there immediately. Yeah. But she has the same superpowers as Superman. Mm-hmm. She's the same, you know, it's uh I guess he's taller, so maybe he has a longer reach. Uh, but the, uh, <laughs> he can reach things on high shelves. <laughs> exactly. That's his whole thing. And, uh, but because the, the complaint I get a lot about Superman from people who follow DC and who like Batman better than Superman is that Superman is so, uh, he's omnipotent. You know, it's like mm-hmm. you can't beat him. It's almost impossible to beat him and that you have to yeah. create kryptonite for that. But. I understand in the second season, this, this is now second season of Supergirl, that the, the guy playing Superman mm-hmm. is actually doing a great job. I think so. Yeah. yeah I met him. I, I've seen the first episode of the second season and he right. makes an appearance. Okay. And I, I liked it. Yeah. I, was, I hear he's just a big blue boy scout. Yeah. Which is what I want out of my Superman. And Supergirl, who I know nothing about, mm-hmm. uh, I like that she, has this, it, it's that Clark Kent kind of character. Yeah. Where she wants to do good at her day job. <laughs> and then she also. And I want her to do good at her day job because I want to see more about Callista Flockhart. Oh, I really enough. literally love everything she said, like anything that comes out of her mouth. She is pretty amazing. I did like, um, because I like that in one of these episodes they've acknowledged that because there's Jim Ols, James Olson, Jimmy Olson, mm-hmm. and there's the the scientist, the IT nerd genius, who uh, is who Callista no. Flockhart called the good looking Hobbit. Yes, and uh, and I he was goes like, by so many other nicknames that I've just I'm just blanking on his on his actual character's uh, name. I can't yeah. remember and. Um, and it isn't a famous name from the comic book, so I can't, I can't yeah. grab it. But, um, it's, it's such a great team, you mm-hmm. know, the Martian Manhunter and the, and the, um, 
and her sister, there's family yeah. there. I mean, Clark Kent doesn't really have family. Like he'll go back at his aunt or I mean, is his stepmother or his mom. Yeah. And it's just, wow, a lot of different relations there. Uh, so, <laughs> but to just to contrast that, um, at one point there was a crossover episode where the flash comes in. Have you seen that one? I have not yet seen that one. Well, I, I, I won't spoil anything. Okay. That's it's just, okay. That just happens. Um, and it's flash is played by Grant Gustin, who is, just a charming fella. Yes. And so after Supergirl was done, the next season hadn't come out yet. So I was like, ah, check that guy out. How's that it's, guy? Uh, the same universe. So it's DC. Um, right. It's Flash. And he was so charming on the Supergirl episode. My issue with the Flash, though, is okay. exactly what I, what I liked in Supergirl. The Flash did, like, it took on a very paternalistic Oh, kind of a little bossy? Like, they, in order to protect the ones they love, they keep them in the dark. Uh, they don't let them in on things. Oh, they are in a team. Yes. So he's got a secret identity. He's got a secret identity. I mean, Kat does too. Mm -hmm. But like, to whatever extent she does, she, she lets people in on. Kara? Yeah. Or Kira. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Kira. On, on what she knows. And for me, like the flash, like they kept so many secrets from each other. They just never came together. Cause he a has team. a relation. Cause he has a wife or he has a, he has a girlfriend or sisters or what does he got? He, does his, he have people his in mom, his life? His mom was killed when he was a little boy. Mm -hmm. He was taken in by a police officer. And so he has an adoptive family. Okay. And he grows up with them. He ends up working with the police. So he's working with his cop dad. Right. His sister is around, but like his sister can't know. And well, how does he become the flash? Like, I don't, I don't know his origin story. Oh, was he uh, a radioactive uh, oh, radio explosion. Yeah. Okay. So he's not an alien. He's a radio. No, he, he's, he got his superpowers. He's because a of human boy that can just <laughs> run very fast. <laughs> Who doesn't and want to be a human boy? He is Dash. a human boy. Yes. Excellent. So, and, um, okay. So he keeps it all a secret though. But it, it, it feels it, the, the tone is really different and yeah. it just, it's like they didn't respect the people around them. They were like, I know what's best for you. Right, and right. I'm like, I don't like that at all. No, no. That's the great thing about Supergirl. When mm. she, when she ended up telling, um, the, the adorable Hobbit guy that she was, and then he knows that Clark Kent is Superman as well. Mm -hmm. You're like, well, that is, it does feel more respectful. That's it exactly. Doesn't it? Yes. Like, I, I talked to, to Aaron about it because I was like, there's something that I can't put my finger on. And it's like, oh, they don't, they, they, they don't tell them. They think they know what's best for them. And then without bringing right. them in on things. And I'm like, oh yeah, I really don't like that. Right, right. So that is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really, because I didn't know, I didn't think I, because I'm more of a Marvel person than DC. I know and, more about Marvel than DC. Well, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. You, I mean, good Lord, there's 19 movies and, yeah. uh, and at least four television shows and Agents of Shield. Yeah. Agents of Shield. I'm yeah. on board, people. I am like on. it. I watched it from the beginning. I liked that there, it was a, it was an office. It was essentially superhero office spy thing. I'm like, I'm good with that. Yes. You guys don't have to be superheroes. Mm -hmm. Everybody else was mad that there was no superheroes. I was like, no, this is awesome. And now everybody has superpowers almost. Yeah. But I'm like, I'll take it. Yeah. Like Marvel and humans. I'm, I'm, but I do like that in between that Mar, I feel like Marvel is always constantly on this edge, whether they do have, and it, it goes into mutant registration as well. It's like <laughs> you have these exceptional people. Right. Um, whom sometimes you can't control. Like, how much does the public get to know? Like, do you put all of their information out there? Oh, right, right. Or, and like, the... I'm, I have kind of thoughts on both sides. And Agents of Shield is constantly like, what do we? Right, right. What, what would be the right thing to do? Yeah, yeah. Which I think is is valid. You yeah. know, and and I'm and... comfortable with that tension. But yeah. the Flash, I was just like, you just do what you. Th want <laughs> right right which it, dc tends to make that decision for people all the time yeah i'm reading a batman detective series which actually is um batman has batwoman uh get all like the teenage superheroes uh -huh. in a team because he's being stalked and oh. so he's like he Batman, for the first time that I've ever seen in, in any Batmans, uh, Batmans, is that a thing? Is the Batmans. The Batmans yes. with a Z. Uh, <laughs> Batman asks for help. 
Huh. And Batman never asks for help. He barely listens to Alfred. He doesn't even listen to Alfred, and <laughs> Alfred raised him. I know. And you're like, dude. So the fact that he asked Batwoman for help, yeah. and Batwoman has all these kids that also are now helping, that all have, you know, they all have their own utility belts or whatever mm-hmm. the hell their deal is. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, I'm probably four or five issues behind because they're releasing every two weeks. But, but that it's so important, I think. Because I think with fiction, with like Xena and Gabrielle, mm-hmm. you know, they trust, she, they had to learn to trust each other, but that was the journey we went on. Yeah. And we got to beef. I mean, it teaches us more about our own humanity when these people have these superpowers, right? Mm-hmm. And if, I don't think anyone would doubt that Xena has a superpower. For sure. For sure. She's, she's not of this world. She is not of this <laughs> yeah. world. And then we get to meet all the gods later, right? Don't we? Oh, we get to meet them pretty soon, pretty quick. Is it quick? Yeah. I feel like Ares and them come Show into, up. Come oh, into right, play. Because Ares wants Xena back on his side. Right. Because she's, she's like, big... I'm not going to fight anymore. And he's like, <laughs> you are. You're really, <laughs> you're really good for war. Yes. And, uh, he's and like, I'm you're part of my war. brand. I uh, <laughs> kind of have. A little stake in you at this point. Man, the guy who played the Aries, he cracked me up. He had facial hair that should just go down in the history books. It was cultivated like a bonsai tree. <laughs> yes. He passed away, right? He did, uh, unfortunately. The actor passed away? He was a stuntman. Oh, was basically. he? Basically, yeah. And on there was a movie he was filming on, in, and uh, yeah, he died. Oh, wow. And oh, and he died on the job? I, oh. Don't know. I don't think know. He, I want to say he died on set, but I don't know if right. it was. I feel for some reason right now I'm thinking he died at a party. That's what I wanted to say too, but that makes it sound less. It was like of the movie. It was like yeah, that's oh, that's why I'm saying. Oh, I see. Set, like it was a rap party or something. <laughs> that would be the worst. But yeah, <laughs> did he at least finish the job? It and, was. Uh, it was. It was super tragic because apparently he was like the nicest dude. Well, yeah. I mean, the thing is, is, is when you watch, like, like Hercules' sidekick. Yeah, he, he totally reminds Ilus, me. I think what was his name? Ilus or it was something like something. that. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, yeah I loved. I love I, the, the relationships that they. Cr- I remember, and then re- remember they tried to do the same people who did Hercules and Xena recently tried to do a reboot. They're still doing a reboot of no, no, of not of Hercules and Xena though. Are they doing a reboot? They're of Hercules doing a and reboot Xena? of Xena. Okay, with who? I don't who think knows? they have, uh, but. I have so little faith in this reboot. Like, right. it would hurt this dude's feelings. <laughs> <laughs> like, he would just not be able Sam to go on. Sam whatever? Rainy? Oh. Sam, no, that's no a he's not actor. attached. It's it's a completely different dude. Oh, it's a new team? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, then that has it trouble, doesn't too. Even, yeah. Okay. It's, I... <laughs> well, they... I read the books, too, but it was like it was done by the same team who did Xena and Hercules, and they tried to do the one... Oh my God! This is uh, somebody yell at your iPad. Tell me, iPod. Tell me what you're what I'm thinking of. I it might was, be able to. It was. Get um, there. It was that all I remember. It was called Legends, maybe or something like that. The and Legendary it was, Journeys or something. Uh, possibly, but that wasn't it. The, yeah. It was. There's 19 of these books, and the and the and the author is total like a certain dude from the Ren Fair. Because his, his, like, his author picture is just all one length, right? In his hair. And it's, yes. but it's tied back in a ponytail. Mm-hmm. And he's super clean shaven, but he's looking at you from underneath these giant eyebrows. And he's just looking at you very sultry. Dude. And every, and I read, I think, three of the books. And the books, it's about this guy who can't have sex. Oh, and no. <laughs> he keeps get ca- being captured by like these dominatrix people. Anything? Okay. No, but I cannot <laughs> wait <laughs> to find oh, this. What the fuck was it called? I I feel like I lost the thread here, Jackie. Like, what is this? How does this relate to, to Hercules? Xena and Hercules? Yeah. It's the same pub producers. Oh, so it's they made a TV show yes. of this guy's book. Yes, of this guy's book. Oh, no, Legend of the Seeker. Legend of the Seeker. Oh, yeah. No, I thought it was a book. Well, 
Yes, played. yes, yes. No. Thank you, Legend of Jenny the Seeker. Chalikian. Oh my goodness. There we go. Legend. It, Have it you was read those a books? book. It was a book. I read the book, and the guy is a libertarian freak. <laughs> like uh, he's not just a libertarian; he's a sexual freak, and yeah. uh, he's an adult man. So do whatever you want to do. Yeah. But uh, I read the first book, and I was like. And there was a hundred pages of this dominatrix business. I don't know if you, there is, you are absolutely right. There is a, there's like a cult of women. Of women. Who, who uh, put a collar on you and, and yes. tie you up and beat you, beat yes. you up a lot. And then, so I was like, well, this must drive the plot. This must mean something. So no. I read the whole book and then I, then I get the second book and it's the same fucking book. Yeah. It's a good 75% of the book is just him being with nuns. Tortured. It's nuns. And I, I'm like, wait, we're 45 pages in and you got a collar on again? Mm-hmm. What's going on, brother? Hey, he was, no, I'm happy for you. If you enjoy this, this, you knock yourself out, obviously, but I don't need to read this book again. That's, I'm good. <laughs> that series is actually what turned me on to YA. Because uh, I was like, it's really? the same sci-fi <laughs> fantasy setting, but I don't have run the risk of seventy five percent of it being him in a dungeon, right? Being, yeah, yeah. Having let's, his let's make this yanked around by some like it's lady, and I'm just, just like, being led by his his half uh, uh, aroused cock that doesn't want to be aroused. It or was. Whatever. I said cock, that's literally guys. what. Yeah, I started reading the Ranger's Apprentice like the next day, <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> "What's enough. the Ranger's Apprentice? Is that it's a YA? Great, yes. Okay." I need to, I need, um, check it out. I remember it being like a breath of fresh air after (laughs) that thing. You're just like, yeah, I just want sword and sorcery action adventure. Leave me alone. But see, I thought the series would be better because like, oh, right. Because visually you can't sustain that kind of storyline for like five. And it's, it's done by Sam Raimi and they do have that kind of like episodic thing. So I was like, oh, maybe this is the thing that will rescue it. Yes. And I don't know. It did people, not come to pass because I tried to watch it uh, and I probably made it through two thirds of the first season. And yeah. I was like, oh, God, just if, uh, all right, it's all going to be about his dick anyway. And I can't possibly and I'm happy for him. But Jesus, God, that should have been how they pitched it. It's like, <laughs> this is going to be about, his about this tiny ripped man's <laughs> penis. <laughs> Join this tiny ripped man as he's surrounded by women who know what the crap right? they're doing. Right. It did give us Bridget Regan. That's the first thing I remember her being in. Was and she, I in the, love was she her. dressed in all white? Was yes. that the lady? Okay. Bridget Regan. I named what is my she iPod after her. Kaylin. <laughs> um, <laughs> Good for you. Oh, I, I named was, my, I, I named my, my car she after Logan's me. run. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah. Cause it's a good runner. <laughs> and it's blue, and I always think of anyone named Holds Logan up. as somebody dressed Holds in up. blue for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Logan's run. Uh, she is in a lot of things now. Do you watch Jane the Virgin? Have I don't. Ever- I don't. Uh, I only she's in that. Uh, the only thing I watch are Agents of Shield, Supergirl, and uh, the Great British Bake Off. <gasps> and I'm behind on the Great British Bake Off. I, I keep trying to watch British Bake Off, but like I and. If there's one episode, there's one season on Netflix, but then the rest of the seasons are on YouTube. Right. And I can, I, I can never find, there's always an episode missing that I can't find. And I'm very specific. Oh, I, like I have to see You're the like, whole. what happened to that you guy? You can't just skip like a competition. Right. Except thing. for that the competition is so beautiful. I know. And what I do love about it is that they're constantly making cakes and breads. Yeah. That I don't want any part of. No. I'm like, I wouldn't eat that on a dare. What are you doing to me? <laughs> I was just like, I just I'd make a simple pie. Simple sponge. Uh, I, a simple sponge. <laughs> make a simple sponge. Just a base of a Super sponge. <laughs> Put a can of root beer on top. It's a new thing. I don't don't know what's up. Right. And uh, now Lucy Lawless was on Agents of Shield, and they killed her. Yeah. I, and you're like, I don't approve of that dumb rookie move. I assume uh, it's because she had to do Ash in the Evil Dead. But oh. is she any Ash in the Evil Dead? Yeah, pretty well, that's prominently. Good. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I I just want her to work, quite honestly. Uh, me too. Yeah, because she's awesome. <laughs> she is another gift that has been given us that we are not. Wor- her Wait. Twitter's actually pretty great. Too. Is it? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's that's awesome. And then, um, so this is just all over the place. I'm it is sorry. all over the place. But the thing is, is the last it? episode. I'm loving it too because <laughs> it's just it's essentially a, kind of a celebration of different sword and sorcery magical TV shows. And I'm okay with that. Of which I am 
I'm bored. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I've seen, um, I remember though, I, cause I was in college, I think. Was mm-hmm. I in college when, when Xena came out and I was watching it a lot? No, mm-hmm. I think I was in Minneapolis. Whatever. Who cares? Uh, I'm a hundred. And so I'm watching it and I remember seeing the scene. Like I didn't get that it was sort of lady on lady erotica until they were bathing. I didn't either, of which they do a lot. There was, I don't, There's a is lot there more of, than one? I only saw one that I can remember. There's several? There's quite a few. There's They're <laughs> constantly in some they were very, body of water. They were very good about keeping clean <laughs> and sanitation and hygiene. Right. Which, which is really I thought a was sexier of, than, than I thought it was going to. I mean, I was mm-hmm. like, no, that's pretty sexy. And I yeah. don't, I don't want to sleep with either of them, but I'll, <laughs> I'll watch that. So I started watching Xena like in the last two years. I've oh, seen really? the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. And I, I, I hate to say this, yes. but it makes me nostalgic for like the era where gayness was taboo because oh, right. it was so racy right. what it, they were doing. And like, there's so much tension it and was now created. it's like, why don't you just have them make out, you know? Right. And at the time it was like super, it was a different, it was completely different. And like people would like vociferously deny that there was any lesbian. Subject. Yeah. Yeah. That is, yeah. that is hilarious. And you're right. Cause there is, there is a big thing happening in so much television now where obviously the writer's rooms are full of 45 year old dudes that are like, let's make them kiss. Oh, it's been noted. Yeah. And uh, you're like, no, no, they, all right. If do you need them to? It, okay. And none of it makes sense. And none they die it. almost instantly after they kiss. <laughs> Oh, right. They're always killing. Now, I don't remember. What are some of the, like, she's constantly throwing her chakram and it's disarming people. And it's, is it killing people? It could. It's bloodless, right? Mm-hmm. Usually it's a pretty bloodless show, Xena. Yeah. It's very sort of like, you know, Buffy. um, yeah, it's like, it's like martial arts movies. It's okay. very much based in that aesthetic. I'd say with the fighting sequences. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sam Raimi and Rob Tappert, the guys who did it were obsessed with like Kung Fu and oh, okay. uh, like, uh, like old Westerns. I watched an episode yesterday because I'm really into, um, this right now, given our country's state, I need to watch a lot of Xena to prepare myself. Sure. So, um, I was watching some of the ones with the Amazons and there's one with like the steppe Amazons that live in the East. Okay. And they're tree running like straight up crouching tiger, hidden dragon stuff. Oh, and wow. it is on TV and not even like a network show. It was like a syndicated show. Right, right. That was, it's, it's totally beautiful. Yeah. It, it, you could put it side by side, uh, like crouching tiger hidden dragon and it wouldn't be embarrassing and right, like they were the obviously yeah and amazing. they were obviously working with like a sliver of the budget yeah like well that's that's the thing that always impressed me about this thing was mm-hmm. that there are, we have it's a sliver of a budget uh andy mafella mm-hmm. uh went to when they when it finally ended the show mm-hmm. he went to the prop sale oh. and he heard about it the last day <laughs> yeah. so we have several swords ah. and scabbards ah. and we have and they're just props. They're not hers, right? Uh-huh. They're, they're background, but mm-hmm. they're made out of resin and they're beautiful. Mm-hmm. And we have this, um, a giant pokey stick, what are, like a spear, yeah. right? And that has been Javelin? leaning. No, or no, it's no. a spear, a yeah. giant spear. Okay. And it's just leaning in our, in our bedroom. Oh, yes. And, uh, you're like, good Lord. Hilarious. No, I'm like, good Lord. That's amazing. It's pretty <laughs> amazing. When he came back from an, um, I was like, what? You got swords? And he's like, oh. yeah, I got swords and I got scabbards and I got, and he said all they had, le- he missed like the the first two days of it and it uh-huh. mostly picked over. He said all that were really left were just heaps and piles of swords and scabbards and, and spears. I would have been like nonverbal, just wandering around <laughs> in a cloud if I were there. Right. <laughs> I think they were either $5 a piece or 20 bucks a piece what? and he bought as many as he could. Oh my God. Yeah. Man. Pretty oh. amazing. The thing that's really amazing to me about Xena, and it kind of relates to the weaponry, is it's just sort of like the past. It's 5,000 years ago. <laughs> it's 2,000 years ago. Like it's, it's 700 years ago. Exactly. You can't it's tell. the Ren Fair, but it's also Christ, and it's also the ancient Greeks. You oh know. my God, that's right. The whole Christ thing. Wasn't that near the end of the run? Yeah. Because they crucified her. and They crucified her, and then there was a separate Christ figure, like, yeah. a, like a Jesus figure. Yeah, and he was like in India at first. Like Gabrielle runs into him in India. Oh, that's right. But then he goes back and he's like in like some sort of Middle Eastern area. Okay. 
Gabrielle doesn't go like Wiccan, does she? Like I'm thinking of Buffy, right? Where I mean, the, where what's her face goes? Um, Willow. Willow goes uh, Wiccan. She and goes bad full guy. Wiccan. Yeah. Yeah. She, but but and then bad guy Wiccan. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Dark Willow. Dark Willow. Gabrielle becomes an Amazon. Oh. So in season one, yeah. Yeah. In so season like, one, she becomes an Amazon. So yeah, Gabrielle is. Um, she got out of that town with a vengeance. Holy hell! She became a literal princess, uh, like before the first half of the season. What? Because she still like really wants to do good. So they meet the Amazons. The Amazons get attacked, and she just throws herself in front of this person without thinking. Oh, and it happens to be the like, queen or the queen or princess. And like, so they were just like. Uh, you're an honorary you're, Amazon. You're an honorary Amazon and you're our leader. And she's like, okay. <laughs> I gotta go. Yeah. Hey, my friend's leaving. I got <laughs> That's exactly what happens. <laughs> and then she basically rules the Amazons like. From afar? From afar. From she Jafar. sends a raven occasionally and just like. <laughs> Fucking. What you guys need? What you guys need? Yeah, no, you're good. All right. She just rules from Trump towers, just and, letting uh, everyone it's, know what's it's up. It's yeah. like, hey guys, it's a no, no. Raise taxes. Oh, lower taxes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> uh, and then does she? She learns to. Does she eventually get a horse? I forget. She's walking the entire time, I believe. <laughs> six seasons of her walking. <laughs> six. She gets a, like a horse at one point, but it's. I just remember her walking all the time. I remember her walking, and I remember Zena just leading the horse. Yeah, they never... Zena is never really troubled by her walking. Right, right. (laughs) And just like... Sometimes they're back... They they ride double. Mm -hmm. I've seen that a couple of times. Yeah. But I've seen Zena riding and... Just Gabriel just walking. Yeah. Next I'll catch up. I'll catch up. Don't worry. Next Sometimes they loop back, and they have separate adventures. (laughs) Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. There's, mm-hmm. a, there's an A plot and a B plot, and then they regroup at the end and tell each other what happened. Or no? yeah, okay. So like the like Zena will just be like, "Peace, I gotta go to some other town," and mm-hmm. Gabrielle's like, "I'm gonna get up to mischief here," <laughs> and it's, she does, and she does, and then Zena is always sort of the Deus ex machina at the end, who's just like Gabrielle's really in the shit, and then suddenly Zena is there to save the day. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of awesome. Yeah. Okay. Like what? So. What episodes? What is what is Gabriel is does Gabriel just show up and she's like oh I gotta help these there's orphans or there's puppies yeah. or something she's kind of a bleeding heart right. which also at some point Gabrielle's daughter kills Zena's son so they have to spend some time apart yeah what uh, wait you a know, minute I forgot about you know how in sci-fi do they both have babies they do um, are they pregnant together they oh, well there's Zena over- has like a son in her dark times so and she, she's like he's being raised by the centaurs <laughs> um awesome you know like yeah, like you do you gotta find a noble tribe and who more noble than the centaurs, than the centaurs. so he's there um and in sci-fi as is want to happen they have a rapid birth where it's just like i'm pregnant oh now i'm having oh. a baby <laughs> um, oh so wait did gabrielle have a magic baby she had a magic baby oh which Jenny has pointed out to me because I'm not the sci-fi fan that you guys are. I don't know as much. She's like, yeah, yeah. rapid pregnancy means evil baby. Oh, that does yeah. mean evil baby. That <laughs> when is has evil it baby. ever been like, oh, this works out perfectly? <laughs> right. Because for some reason, good guys are like, no, you, we can wait for it. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, the devil's like, nope, we got to get to it. Yeah. Also, like, uh, I was a little aggravated at how naive she was because, like, she's impregnated, I think, by a tongue of fire. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's, uh, is that what he called it? That's what, yeah. Um, oh, that's He funny. was really high on himself. But, uh, <laughs> and then she's like surprised. Like Zena's like, she, she like broaches the subject very delicately. She's like, Hey, um, I think your kid might be evil. Satan. Like low key <laughs> Satan. <laughs> And she's I like, think your Zena, baby has rapid baby syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> I think your baby has murder face. Am I saying it right? Resting murder <laughs> face. Resting murder face. <laughs> and uh, I think we found the clip. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, uh, and like Gabrielle's just like, Zena, you just got to get to know her. And then it's too late. She murders <laughs> Zena's, Zena's son? son really hard. Oh, boo. Real hard. And he is, he's a good guy? Yeah. Because he was raised by I mean, Santa. he's just is a he kid. boring? 
Oh, how old is he? Is he like 10 or something? Yeah. Yeah. So he's, I vaguely remember this episode. Yeah. Are all the seasons on Netflix? Cause now I kind of want to yeah. go back. No, they totally are. Kind of get in. Do it. Do it. After season three, they kind of do like, uh, like a religion per, uh, season. So there's oh, like, okay. so they, they just do, a... they're like, let's write a lot of religious fanfic and just have them just like <laughs> weaving in and out Hindu, of there. Hindu, Christian. Hindu, Christian. All of yeah. them. There's, there's Jewish stuff too, because there's, um, there's, what's his name with the, with Moses? the slingshot. Oh, uh, David, David and Goliath. Davy and Goliath. <laughs> Davy and, you remember Davy and Goliath. and Goliath. Davy. It was, he was a claymation from when I was yeah. a child back in the 12th century. <laughs> Davy. Carl Urban is also three different characters throughout Xena. Oh, is he? He's Cupid. He is the Isaac's evil brother. Um, and Isaac? he is, um, the guy, the sacrif, the, in, uh, Oh, Isaac, um, Isaac, yeah. Abraham and Isaac. Yes. And, okay, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah. I'm on it. I'm, I'm with it. I got some Bible. But in this one, it's Isaac's evil brother that's pretending to be God, which can't be blasphemous at all. <laughs> but uh, that's Carl God, Urban. see, it's so syndication writing. You're just like, it's and it so was on ridiculous. at three in the afternoon. I remember that mm-hmm. going, you know, you're just like, children are what? Okay, mm-hmm. all right. But Carl Urban is, uh, and then he was Caesar. Oh, right, and he point. was Caesar. Yes. He wasn't pilot? And then he was a beefcake, uh, Cupid. He was a beef- he's like, Mom, why are you being so mean? He's like, has oh, a I valley guy that. accent. The valley guy accent. Yeah, cause his mom is, um, Aphrodite, Aphrodite exactly. Oh, and she's awesome. like naked the entire time. She's super noodly? Like just she, the, d- d- deceptively draped? She wears a lot of, uh, uh, shawls, like very see-through. Shawl like strategically draped. Just sexy gauze is really her <laughs> aesthetic. I don't know. You're just like, okay, well, we're going to make it a little bit darker there because yeah. we're going to cover that area up that, yeah. uh, that nobody wants uh, mm-hmm. coming at you at the, on, on channel 18 in it's, Milwaukee on a, on a Saturday afternoon. We're talking about a lot of different parts, but they all came together <laughs> in quite a sensational <laughs> way. Good for you. Yes. All right. Uh, holy smokes. When I first started watching this show, I asked Jenny what her favorite episode was. Yeah. And she said it was, it's a day in the life, right? I have a favorite because they have campy episodes and they have serious episodes. Right. And I have a favorite campy episode and I have a favorite serious episode. Yes, please. And my favorite campy episode is like day in the life. What is that one? Um, it's just like they literally follow, uh, them through a day of them fighting evil, they'll be like morning and like, like title cards will come up. It's like morning. And like, right. You'll see their like breakfast routine, which is basically Xena fighting evil with a frying pan. <laughs> and it's like making decisions and like, it's, it goes sequence, but there it's so goofy and I love right. it so hard. A day in the life. And Joxer is in that one. And Joxer is played by Sam Raimi's brother. Right. Who was Joxer again? Uh, what Sam was his Raimi character? Ted Raimi. Joxer was just a goof about that followed he, did him. Did he just keep showing up and he was always wearing a He had a like a colander hat. on his head. Yeah, he always and had a like, weird hat. He, like he, in the beginning, like bills himself as a warrior, but like he really just wants to be a noble dude, but he can't. He's just a good dude. He's just a normal walking around yes. guy. And like, I feel like in the beginning, I felt bad for him because I was like, I felt like he was the butt of too many jokes. Yeah. But like, in the end, he's just a good guy. And yeah. like, I feel like that was super relatable. I'm, yeah. I'm pro Joxer. Pro Joxer. Yeah. Pro Joxer. Okay. Mm-hmm. And what was the serious one? What was your favorite serious one? Uh, one against an army is the name of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> Gabrielle gets hit by a poison arrow. Okay. And, um, instead of, they were going to go on one mission and instead they have to fight an entire Persian army. <laughs> Xena fights an entire Persian army yes. in order to get the antidote. She makes that Sparta movie look like garbage. Right. Like, right. She just, they had 300 times more guys than she did. Right, and none of it was CGI. It was just all just different dudes from New Zealand. Were yeah. Like, all of you. She just, murdered all of them. I murdered <laughs> all of them. Every single one. To get the anecdote. It was apparently three days of filming that the, like just in this one barn. Oh my god. And she god. just, she just, it's, it was an intense, it's a cool fight scene. I, okay. I need to, I, also, I, wasn't there one where, was there singing? 
Was there? There are two musical episodes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yes. What are they? One, they go to Illusia, and uh, so it's oh. basically like this weird, like liminal, like underworld mm-hmm. place. But like they have to confront their issues because this is right after uh, Xena son get killed and oh, she okay. nearly throws Gabrielle off a cliff right. because she's like, Gabrielle, <laughs> Gabrielle, seriously, I told you this baby was tried a disaster. To, I tried to warn you. Now my son's double dead, <laughs> double super dead. dead, super dead. But, uh, so they go to this place and work everything out through song. <laughs> In like a weird dream sequency kind of way, like they're in okay. some sort of command central and they get launched through some sort of Alice in Wonderland mirror okay. into various scenarios where they have to sing about what happened. Okay. It is intense. The second one is a Battle of the Bands episode, much more goofy. Oh my God. Much more goofy. Yeah, that ne- that needs to be seen and I'm almost pretty sure, immediately. Like, yeah, Lucy Lawless is like super pregnant or something there. Oh. So she's just doing like guitar riffs and like low-key... Oh, right. Sisters are doing it for themselves solos. <laughs> but, uh. Oh, right, because then they had to do it because she was super pregnant. Yeah. In real life. But she also has like a. She's a really great singer. She was on like. She had a great voice, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and she was on some sort of singing competition recently. Uh, I don't know. Like The Voice or something? Where... Something. Oh, well, I don't know. Some sing sort of, Off? Probably. You guys ever watch that show? It's one no. of Andy's favorites. It's an acapella, um, Acapella. Oh, I think my sister watches it. It's competition of acapella groups. And it's the hardcore. first season, there were like 15 episodes. The second season, there were like six episodes. And now they're just one or two episodes. Are they killing off all of the winners? They like, kill- why are I don't there- understand, but the Pentatonics became hugely famous from it. Oh. And I've never heard of them before. They're king of the Christmas albums at this point, aren't well, they? Well, they are the shiniest, you know, and it's been 10 years. So now they're all 30. They're too happy to me. They're, they're just- too... Well, they Polished. have to be, right? They're, they look like they've been shoved into a rock tumbler, right? I, I mean, they're yes. super, <laughs> super shiny and glowy. I, that is the best. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> what it looks like. <laughs> right. It's a, it's a, uh, oh my God. Yes. I want to be shoved into a rock tumbler. That's what I've, that's one of my jokes about how I, I would come out in. like a pointy crystal that <laughs> everyone's like, that's very pretty, but don't touch it. It's I don't, a, because it'd be too sharp. I would, I would, yeah. Sharp part. I would come yeah. out just jagged like mm-hmm. a ogre. I would be, mm-hmm. uh, my rounded p- parts would be super shiny. Mm-hmm. And then, um, but I would, I, I, I would be all slick and look together. That's what I was hoping a rock tumbler would do for me. You, you I would, like you have gem aspirations for yourself. Gem aspirations. <laughs> sure. I'm not above it. <laughs> so what, uh, you were going to say something though. I think that another thing that I really like about Xena is that the there's all these tribes and all these like names of groups that are like actually historical. Right. Like they'll be like, we're gonna go fight the Tuscanesians or something. I'm making that up. But right. it'll be like it'll be like a You could almost, look them up. Yeah, whatever they're talking about is a historical real thing that the you can more find you know, out with a star. Yeah. It's a go down to your local library. My parents took us to Greece and Italy shortly after I watched all of Xena and like they were so what? thrilled that I was so interested in everything that I was seeing. Yes. They had no idea why it all stemmed. Oh it my god. It stemmed from some serious I have a very, television. I have a very <laughs> yeah, secret life that just like <laughs> goes unobserved by them. They're just like, she's just so into these statues. The antiquities. She just loves I know. the classics. She's yes. just in her element. <laughs> and I'm like, that's where she killed the Hyksos. <laughs> and that's where she killed Ares. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. That's awesome. Do you <sighs> know, just speaking on awesome ladies yes. who do things, mm-hmm. um, uh, did you ever watch Legend of Korra? Oh, no, but what is that? Because I like Infinity recommend it. Okay. Oh, Infinity. <laughs> Infinity recommend it. Okay. Is that a thing? Yes. Yes, the it kids is. Are saying it that is now. And yes. C O R A. Uh, K O R R A. Oh, so wrong. <laughs> Got it. Legend it's of Korra. Janet Varney. Yeah. Oh, she she voices it. Yeah. That's where I've heard of it. And she's a treasure. Again, another yeah. delight that She's has great. been released into the wild. Uh, I um, I am going on a nerd cruise with Janet Varney, and she's going to do... Um, I feel like you're just reading my dream journal at this point. It's, uh, <laughs> like, right, it's the Joe Co. cruise, is... Jonathan Colton cruise, <gasps> next March, and it's going to be a Parna Nanchirla, oh, the Double God. Clicks, Janet Varney, 
Um, Jonathan Colton. Um, wow, there's more. And then there's going to be like Ed Brubaker who wrote all the Captain Americas and he writes a lot of noir now. Mm. So uh, comic book writers, <laughs> Chelsea Kane, who uh, writes. She did ask me about my feminist agenda. Is that her? I think so, maybe, but she writes these, inc- she's been on the Dork Forest earlier, she, uh-huh. a couple of years ago. She lives in Portland. Her, she, she sold a, um, she sold a beautiful, um, she writes these murder books. They're like true crime mm-hmm. murder books. And I'm like, well, I'll never be reading those. Those sound terrifying. Yeah. Chelsea Kane. And they are, but she, <laughs> the, her first bestseller, she took a bunch of the money and built a Dungeons and Dragon basement area for her husband. Who loves Dungeons and Dragons that Aww. she decorated with shields and swords and made That's it the best, awesome. coolest. Yes. And then like secret passageways. Oh. Just because she loves him so. Oh, secret passageways though, man. That's better than a skylight. That's <laughs> in terms of like elevating your living place. Oh, right, to right. Just yeah, the yeah. tops. Exactly. You're like, I want a way passageway. Secret passageway. It's the best. Oh. So Legend of Korra, is it animated, you said? Yes. Okay. And but it's, seasons? it's, it holds up, um, oh, couple? Four? Oh, four. really? Okay. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's a sequel to, uh, The Last Airbender, which is also great. Great. But you can watch it independent. Okay. And it's, uh, she has control over all four elements. Okay. Um, but she's also Air, kind fire, of this those weird. Elements? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, but she also has kind of this, she doesn't have like a political position, but she is a leader of some sort. And like, so she has to also navigate these political, uh, things. Sounds very boring, but like she, it's, it's really, really great. Yeah. She's fighting evil. Okay. She's, negotiating with people and she can control air fire water, oh yeah dirt. and it's great gr8 it's amazing okay that's awesome i'll i'll give that and it's probably on netflix and stuff yeah. amazon oh amazon Prime. the one that i saw was the one where um they were the metal benders okay can do this really evil thing called blood bending because there's metal in your blood ah. that's right right or am i wrong they're water benders oh. and they can also blood bend i think but yeah, so that means nice. that they can control people, like they, they can oh. hurt you. Oh, like, puppet, like like voodoo puppeteering, kind of. Yeah, and okay. it's like really, it's like this unethical practice that the benders can Sounds use. Sounds terrible. It's it, yeah, it's like there's a lot of political stuff, and so like there, it's outlawed as a practice, mm-hmm. and like you can bring somebody to court for practicing it. In okay, their, in their civilization, it's a really interesting show. I feel like I'm not selling this, but like rather than like the Airbender thing, which is kind of episodic, they're mm-hmm. just kids having adventures, which is okay. awesome. It's great. Um, this does have somewhat of an arc, but they pull it off. Okay. I, I rarely see that. And I'm just like, it's so, it fits together. It's a great story. Yeah. Yeah. Cora is an amazing character. I don't know. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys, we're, we're at like, we're at like 55. <laughs> okay. So I would like to, Aaron Judge, who has been on the program before, what was your dorkdom? Sex and the City. That's right. We did Sex and the City episodically. We did. That was a great episode. That it got a, a lot of reaction. People had a lot to say about it. People got involved. They wanted to know and they wanted to talk to you about their favorite episodes. And so go back and listen to the Aaron Judge specific, uh, Sex and the City episode. What's your uh, Twitter and all that? At Aaron Judge, E R I N J U D. G-E. That's it. And if you want to buy my book, which is a novel and is That's really right. fun and sexy, it's called Vow of Celibacy and it's on Amazon. There you go. Vow of Celibacy, uh, Aaron Judge. And then uh, Jenny Ch- Ch- Chalikian? Chalikian, yeah. There, Chalikian. Yeah. I like it. I, I always want to ethnic yeah, it up a little bit more like people want to do with Kashian. But, uh, <laughs> Kashian? Kashian. No, Kashian. Ka- There's Ka- an apostrophe in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so what you're at Jenny Chalikian on yeah, uh, it's Twitter just and, my the, name. and the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. On Instagram or whatever is available. Same, same thing. And I think. you guys with the stand up, you got a book? You got to get an no, album? No, no, no. You got a, you got a cat? I, I just have, I have a cat and I have a show that I run with Aaron in Culver City at the Ripped Bodice every third Thursday. Right. Called Romantic Comedy. And I believe Laurie Kilmartin is going to be this on Thursday? our upcoming show. Yeah. That's great. I wish, uh, I am, uh, this will go up next you're, you're Tuesday. You're a busy bee. This, I appreciate you guys, us meeting at night to do a, a dork for us. So thank you so much, <laughs> Thank you Jenny for having me. Sure. And Rangers, you know the rules out there, and it's super important now. Take care of each other. See ya. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that?
If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh my god. Thank we you. why don't we just call that as the end of the show?